Can you literally punch your way out of prison? Why can social media be a convict's worst enemy? And what happens when two people are handcuffed together and they try to make a run for it? All these questions will be answered and more, so hold on tight and be prepared to do a lot of head scratching. Number 20. In 2012, perhaps history's most comical prison escape took place. The guys doing the escaping had done everything right, at the start at least. With painstaking perseverance, they dug a tunnel at a prison in Ceres, Brazil. This had taken them in quite some time, but then one day they were finally ready to make their move. One of the guys was Rafael Valadao, weighing around 224 pounds at the time of the escape. It should be noted he wasn't exactly tall. He was the second to go through, with a much smaller man going first. Behind him were some other guys. The problem was, due to Valadao's size, he got stuck, which left the guys behind him also stuck. When prison officers arrived on the scene, they didn't know whether to be serious or fall down laughing. Valadao had apparently broken a rib trying to fit through the hole, and this, it seems, was amusing to the officers. One of the firefighters who was then tasked with extracting him told the media the other prisoners tried to push him, but he stayed stuck in the wall. He started screaming in pain, and that was when the prison guards were alerted. A local cop explained, he seemed to have underestimated the size of his stomach. It seems that the smaller guy actually got away, or at least that's what the report said at the time. Now for some pure, unadulterated dumb. Number 19. In 2013, an inmate at Hamilton County Jail in Tennessee, USA, cooked up a plan to escape. It was a simple plan, to say the least. That was to take another prisoner's ID, a prisoner that was about to be released, so that when that man's name was called, he would simply pass himself off as the other prisoner and walk out. Simple. The guy doing the escaping was named Kenneth Burnham, a white male standing at about 5 foot 7 inches tall. A guy whose ID he borrowed was named Glenn Taylor. Using this other ID and getting as far as claiming the other man's belongings, Burnham was almost out the door when a prison officer noticed something that didn't really look right. That was the fact that Burnham didn't look anything like the person whose ID he was carrying. Taylor was in fact an African-American male and his height was closer to 5 foot 10 inches. When officers asked Burnham why he thought he could pass himself off as someone with a vastly different skin color, his reply was that he was so desperate to get out that he was being dumb. Can't disagree with that. This next one was equally dumb but arguably twice as embarrassing. Number 18. In 2016, the media reported that a prisoner in Brazil thought about replicating his own version of the escape in the movie Shawshank Redemption. We don't know his name, but thanks to a video that appeared online, we know his method of escape. He had believed that if he took out the toilet bowl on his cell, he'd be able to escape through the sewer pipes. But unfortunately, all he got for his efforts was being covered in poop and a bunch of guards pulling him back out. That's kind of funny, but this next one certainly isn't. Number 17. As you might have seen in the movies, if you're going to dig an escape tunnel, one of the things you need to do is ventilate the place or you might find yourself struggling to breathe. That was what happened in 2018 to a 25-year-old Brazilian man named Judson Cunha Evangelista in Monte Cristo Penitentiary in northern Brazil. This guy did everything right at the start, spending months digging a tunnel during the nights and covering the entrance to the hole during the day. He managed to dig an impressive tunnel that was 230 feet long and reached all the way to the outside. It seems one night he'd been digging but was struggling to breathe, so he scurried as fast as he could back to his cell. He died anyway from an acute lack of oxygen. Prison authorities said Evangelista, a convicted murderer, had dug his way past the towering prison walls and under electrified fences and only had a few feet left to get to a forest at the time of his death. An investigation showed that the plan had been not only to get himself out but to charge other prisoners for the use of his tunnel. The next one will put down to karma. Number 16. We guess some of you feel a bit sorry for these people whose lives haven't gone the way they wanted, but you also have to remember some of them have committed terrible crimes. That was the case with a US woman named Jessica Boomershine. On January 15, 2020, she and an accomplice were at a casino in the US and had their eye on an 85-year-old man. They followed him home and when there, they managed to secure the guy's firearm. They proceeded to fire off some bullets and told the man that he was going to take the trip. At gunpoint, they took him to an ATM, and following some more rough treatment, they forced him to draw out a load of money. After taking a large sum of cash from his account, they then locked him in the trunk and left him at a waste facility. He could have easily died there if he hadn't been able to find the emergency release switch and get out and find some help. It didn't take the police long to find Boomershine, not the world's smartest criminal. While in a holding cell at the police station, she thought she'd try and break out through the ceiling. In short, the roof collapsed on her and officers pulled her down, taking her pants down at the same time. If there's a fitting end to the story, she landed right in a garbage can. Later in court, the judge sentenced her to 25 to 30 and a half years in prison. Number 15. This next man was described as one of Australia's most notorious convicts. His name was George Savas, and he was a drug baron. 
What makes his escape stupid is what he did after, not the escape itself. In July 1996, he was being visited in prison after getting a hefty sentence for trying to import 80 kilos of heroin into Australia. On that particular visiting day, he managed to slip on a wig, plus a fake mustache and a beard, and proceeded to walk right out, and no one batted an eyelid. This was a job well done and an embarrassment to the Australian authorities, and you'd think Savas would have kept his head down after that, but nope, it seems he still wanted to eat at one of Sydney's swankiest restaurants, and this was a well-known criminal whose face had been all over the newspapers. He was halfway through his steak when the police arrived, finding one gram of cocaine on him too. He was sent back to prison, where just a few months later another escape attempt of his was foiled. This one had been planned with one of Australia's worst serial killers, Ivan Milat. It seems the prison had guessed these guys had some kind of plan and had used recording devices as well as undercover agents to foil the plot. The plan had been to overpower officers, get over the wall, and drive away in a getaway car. They'd prepared for violence, with the authorities saying they were prepared to injure or kill anyone who got in their way. Just hours after the plot was discovered and the men were given a good talking to, Savas was found dead in his cell. But if you need to hear any story about Australian escapes gone wrong, it is this next one. Number 14. The prison was the notorious penitentiary at Port Arthur in Tasmania. The place started off as a penal colony where Brits who had acted badly ended up if indeed they survived the long journey across the ocean. It was also, for the worst of the worst, those who had committed an offense even after they arrived in Australia. With that in mind, you can imagine that this place was no walk in the park. The authorities said it was impossible to escape from, and if someone tried, you can bet they'd suffer some serious physical and mental torture. It was a horror prison, and that's why it's been compared to Alcatraz in the US. This brings us to a Scotsman named George Billy Hunt. He was transported to Australia and ended up at Port Arthur for the offense of stealing a handkerchief. If you thought that was bad, the Edinburgh News wrote in 2018, other crimes variously were feloniously, willfully, and diabolically interfering with a dog, having lollipops in his possession. We don't know much more about Billy Hunt, but we do know that he attempted to escape the only way possible, which was through a mass of land nicknamed the Neck. To do that, he needed a disguise since the place was crawling with armed guards and vicious dogs. So Hunt killed a kangaroo and got inside its skin. He then hopped out of the prison and into the Neck. That's pretty clever, but let's just say he hadn't thought much about what would happen next. It seems the guard saw this kangaroo and was thinking it was a real living animal, and they got their guns ready to shoot it. Hunt saw this and got out of the suit and put his hands up. A report stated Hunt was dressed as a kangaroo and was attempting to hop to freedom, only to be shot at by rationed soldiers who had grown accustomed to hearty kangaroo stews. Hart was charged with absconding and given 150 lashes of the whip. The moral of the story is, if you're going to escape inside a dead animal, make sure that it's one humans don't hunt and eat. With this next one, it's also not so much the stupidity of it, but again the sheer absurdity. Number 13. It involved a gang leader in Brazil who was serving 73 years behind bars for drug trafficking. His name was Clavino da Silva. With that kind of sentence, a person can get desperate. Desperate he must have been in 2019 when he was visited by his 19-year-old daughter. She came in and handed her father not just a wig or a fake beard, like the less modern folks would do, but she handed him a quite advanced-looking silicone mask to cover up his entire head. Silva was immediately transformed into a teenage girl, although you wouldn't say the disguise was very believable. The guards didn't fall for it, and they made him take off the mask. So yeah, we think it was pretty stupid to believe he could get away with it, but it's even worse when you consider how strict Brazil's authorities are and the fact that there was no backup plan for his daughter. She would have been charged with trying to help her father get out of prison, of course. She wasn't the only person involved, though, with the prison authorities later saying nine people had helped sneak the mask in and the clothes. Now let's talk about one of the greatest escape artists of all time, a man that did everything right until he made a fatal mistake. Number 12. His name was Yoshi Shiratori. It's hard to call him stupid since he managed to escape from prison four times, but it's what he did after his last escape that we must question, more so since he knew if he got caught he was going to be executed. During his third escape attempt, he killed a farmer while stealing a tomato, and that landed him in Sapporo prison. Because he'd escaped before, he was placed in an isolation block in a special cell, but there he took his time and dug a tunnel using small soup bowls, apparently somehow redistributing the earth somewhere else. Sometime after he got out, he was in a park. It was there that a police officer not knowing who Shiratori was offered him a cigarette. The year was 1948 and smokes were seen as a luxury in Japan. This act of kindness apparently moved Shiratori so much that he told the cop who he was. Bad move. Soon after, he was standing in the high court of Sapporo expecting to be told that he was going to be executed. 
but good fortune was on its way. The court ruled that he'd killed that farmer in self-defense and reversed his death sentence. He still served another 14 years, but in the end, it was his heart that killed him, not the justice system. As for this next one, well, we have no idea what was going through that prisoner's mind. Number 11. Carlos Garcia, a convicted murderer, was doing time at a prison in southeast New Mexico. He decided it was time to go and so got to work on removing the window in his cell using only a razor blade attached to a popsicle stick. This was months of work, and when he did manage to cut through most of the window, he was smart enough to use a plastic sheet and some more popsicle sticks to make it look as though the real window was still in place. Then one night in 2012, he pushed out the fake window and using bed sheets scaled down two stories. Now he was almost a free man, but for some reason that we might never find out, he changed his mind and climbed back up the sheets and back into his cell. One of the prison officers told the media, in the 14 years I've been here, we never had an incident like that. Before you hear this next one, ask yourself what kind of vehicle you'd like to have if you ever got as far as over the prison walls. Number 10. In 2019, a 44-year-old prisoner named Curtis Ray Watson almost succeeded in gaining his freedom after a brutal breakout in Tennessee. Watson was a dangerous man indeed and was serving a 15-year sentence for beating and detaining his wife in 2012. He was violent again during his breakout years later when he strangled and killed a female prison officer. He was eventually caught and given a life sentence without the possibility of parole. But what's so strange in this story is the vehicle he used to make his escape. It was a tractor, which you have to admit wasn't the best choice. Maybe this next one, though, shows that there's also a downside to running during an escape, even though you might not stand out as much as you would chugging down the road in a tractor. Number 9. In 2011, a prisoner named James Edward Russell managed to take off from Washington State Penitentiary, where he'd been serving time for theft and forgery. These were not serious offenses, and it seemed that Russell was doing his time in part of the prison that served as a minimum security work camp. It made it pretty easy for him to get away, and he went off, running apparently like a professional athlete. Media reports state he got as far as 14 miles in no time at all, but as he approached some houses in the woods, he realized he had a problem on his hands. That was the fact that he was still dressed in his prison uniform. We have no idea what was going through his mind, but it seems his plan was to knock on one of the doors and ask to use the phone, after which he'd get someone to pick him up and hopefully the owner of the house wouldn't make a fuss. So he went ahead and knocked. He was then about as surprised as the person that opened the door, seeing as the man was a prison officer who was more than familiar with that prison uniform. Russell made a run for it through the woods but was eventually caught sometime later in the morning. If you thought that one was funny, this is going to make you choke on whatever you're eating. Number 8. Let's imagine Scooby-Doo and Shaggy were convicts in a cartoon. Wrongly accused, of course, because they're nice guys. But still, if they were arrested, you could expect some slapstick comedy, maybe something like them being handcuffed together and at some point trying to run in the opposite direction. No one would be that stupid in real life, right? Well, something similarly silly did happen once in real life, let us explain. The year was 2009 and two male prisoners named Regan Retty and Tiranara White were about to appear at the Hastings District Court in New Zealand. At some point during their transportation, they realized that there was a chance to run. The only problem was they were handcuffed together. As it turned out, running away in tandem is as hard as Scooby and Shaggy might have made it seem. Like a fail from hell, these two geniuses ran on opposite sides past a pole. A police officer later explained how they managed to do this, saying they fell over and were sprayed with pepper spray. But then they got up and ran out of the court onto the street, across the road into a car park, and that's where they met the pole. It was all over. We guess they might have been partially blinded, but a New Zealand TV news show still called it one of the worst escape attempts ever seen. The next escape attempt is just as daft, if not worse. Number 7. In 2012, 19-year-old Carlos Pereira and 24-year-old Sidney da Cruz were involved in one of the crummiest prison escape attempts of all time at the Delegacia de Fertos Jail in Curitiba in southern Brazil. The two waited until lunchtime was over and simply climbed into the trash bags. How those bags were tied from the outside was a bit of a mystery, although it's thought a prison officer could have been on the escape. The two couldn't keep still and an officer noticed that the bags seemed to be breathing. He later told Brazilian media, at first I thought there was a rat, but on closer inspection I could see it was two inmates disguised as bags. So that was indeed a rubbish attempt to get out of jail. But this next one would have been great had the escapee thought a little bit more about logistics. Number 6. In 2010, a prisoner named Michael J. Norwood at the Snake River Correctional Institution in Eastern Oregon did everything right. He could have had a movie made about him if he'd just been as practical as he was creative. This guy made one of the best prison dummies on record, if not the best. He used his own hair for the dummy, and he sculpted a fine head using peanut butter. It wasn't just a head either, he made the entire dummy the same size as himself, and then he clothed it. 
Norwood, who was 41 at the time and in prison for burglary, had spent weeks designing his masterpiece. An investigation showed he'd also made a rope out of a lot of saved dental floss, which he intended to throw over the prison fence. He used book covers and toilet paper tubes to make a kind of hook that would keep the rope in place. On the big day, he went out to the yard of Complex 3. That's where he intended to stay out of sight. Meanwhile, his dummy was left lying in his bed with a pair of headphones on. Okay, this all sounds like a top-notch escape plan. Why are we calling it stupid? The reason is he just stayed in the yard. He hadn't planned on how he'd get to the fence, or even if he did, he hadn't planned how he'd get away through the open fields. No one on the outside knew about his escape, so he just waited there. And then, through some loudspeakers, he heard one of the officers saying, what the hell are you doing? Get back inside right now. When asked about this part of the plan, Norwood later freely admitted that he hadn't really thought about part two of the escape. He was charged $132 for the six library books he'd torn up to make the hook, and he also got 180 days in solitary. This next one is so absurd, you'd think someone made it up, but we can assure you it happened. Number five. This bizarre escape attempt happened in 2016 at a prison in Luzerne County in Pennsylvania. A prisoner named Alexander Scottermastro was in the midst of being transported when he ran from parole officers and into a waiting car. Inside that car was 21-year-old Luciano Ramos. Witnesses later said they'd heard Scottermastro shout, go, 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 so off they went, almost. Because a probation officer named Jim Allardyce got in the way, he was hit and suffered some not-so-serious injuries. What happened next is confusing. Ramos stopped the car and ran to a police station where he screamed that a bunch of men had just tried to carjack him. He obviously thought he could get the cops to arrest the parole officers, which was a pretty stupid thing to assume. When the police officers went to the car, they found Scott Mastro sitting in there surrounded by some very angry parole officers. The police officers talked to the parole officers and discovered that Scott Mastro was trying to escape from prison. Ramos then told them that he had no idea about Scott Mastro's plan and he just picked up his buddy when someone tried to steal the car. Then Scott Mastro snitched on Ramos, showing officers text messages which proved they both planned the escape. The two went straight to jail, of course, and you can bet that Ramos cursed himself forever getting involved. This next might win the award for most pointless prison escape of all time. Number 4. In 2016, a man named Christopher Boscacci tried to get away from California's Elmwood Correctional Facility in Milpitas, and he actually didn't do a bad job. He was somewhere outside in the minimum security area when he climbed on a building and then shimmied his way to the fence. He got over not one fence but two, going so fast he left his prison issue slippers hanging up there. It all came to an end when he fell, and when he did so, it was right into the arms of prison officers who'd been told about this Spider-Man-like character since the entire thing was being watched on a CCTV. 25-year-old Boscacci was taken to the hospital with some slight injuries and was later charged with felony crime of trying to escape from jail. Okay, so what's so stupid about this? The answer is this guy was in jail for a misdemeanor crime of petty theft, and he was due to be released in two or three days had he not tried to make the escape. We guess he must have had a very good reason for doing that. Maybe he left the oven on. Let this next one be a lesson to all you desperados out there that can't get through one day without telling strangers what you're doing and where you are. Number 3. In 2008, a man named Chris Crago found himself in a typical alcohol-sodden situation in a bar just outside Buffalo in the USA. Another drunk guy said those familiar words, let's take this outside, or something to that effect, and Crago, not one to waste an opportunity to use his fists and impress his buddies, took up the guy on the challenge. Seems he didn't just use his fists, with the other guy taking one in the head with a beer bottle. That ended with Crago in handcuffs and in the back of a police car. Police later said he caused serious injuries to the man. The damage to the victim was so bad it resulted in surgery. Crago also got charged with possession of marijuana and driving while drunk. He eventually pleaded guilty to the crime of assault, but when it came to the sentencing day, he just didn't show up. He was due to serve just over a year in prison, but it seemed that he thought the justice system had been a bit unfair to him. Explaining the fight, Craig later said all I did was slap him. That's why he left the state of New York and headed to Indiana. He might have stayed hidden had he not kept posting updates about his whereabouts on MySpace and Facebook. Cops looked at these pages and then got an extradition warrant. Yet again, Crago thought he'd been hard done to, later stating, Getting a governor's warrant extradition on a misdemeanor is about as common as getting the death penalty over a speeding ticket. The police later confirmed to the media that it's quite common to catch criminals by using social media, just because folks seem to think that if it's not public, the posts are safe from the prying eyes of law enforcement. Crago eventually got out in 2011, admitting that a drunken scuffle in a bar had cost him dearly. He's since been called the Facebook fugitive. This next one we'll call the most basic escape attempt of all time. There's nothing fancy here, but you have to credit the man for trying to do the impossible. Number 2. The star of this story is Hector Luis Campos, and when he was 22 years old in 2011, 
It seems he would have done anything to get out of Osceola County Jail in Florida, USA. It was about 4 in the morning when the night shift officers started hearing a banging noise, but at first they had no idea where it was coming from. It would start and then stop for a while, and then start again. They wondered if some construction was going on somewhere. Then they followed protocol and walked around checking the cells. But it seemed that nothing was out of place. The prisoners were busy snoring the night away, so the officers agreed the banging must have been nothing. Then it came again. Dun, dun, dun. What the heck, the officers thought. One of them said it sounded as if the banging was coming from the cells which housed inmates who'd been put under closer supervision. So they kept an eye on each of the TV screens that showed the insides of those cells. It was then that they noticed in one particular cell, their view was a bit obscured by what looked like a sheet. The officers went down to check and there they found Campos sitting down on his bed with a very bloody, very swollen hand. They pulled back the sheet and discovered that some of the bricks around the door frame were broken, and when they looked in the toilet bowl they found bits of paint and mortar. Campos had quite literally been trying to punch his way out of prison, a futile task if there ever was one. A spokesperson told the media his hand is very sore right now. We've saved the best for last, as we always do, and we're sure you will admit that no prison breakout story can top this. Number 1. In 2010, some of you might have stumbled across a rather outrageous newspaper headline that read, Gun-toting Snoopy attempts to free inmate from British jail. The jail in question was on the Isle of Wight, a small island that's about 5 miles off the south coast of England. There are about 140,000 people living on the island, but it's certainly not the kind of place you associate too much with serious crime. For that reason, you would assume that the jails there have pretty lax security. This is what a couple of daring guys must have thought when they entered the jail and started threatening the staff with what appeared to be a gun. One man was wearing normal clothes and the other was dressed like that lovable old beagle, the best friend of Charlie Brown, Snoopy. Their ages were given as 43 and 21. Reports don't say, but we're assuming the older man was Charlie and the younger dude was Snoopy. The prison officer later said it's not every day you see a giant cartoon dog going on the rampage after trying to break into prison. The guys started threatening the staff, throwing rocks around, smashing up cars, trying to beat down the prison door. They were obviously trying to get in to get a guy out. That officer said they weren't exactly inconspicuous, but it was taken seriously because they appeared to have a gun. They caused a real commotion, and it was only later found that they were to be armed with a water pistol. So we have a cartoon dog and his best pal armed with a plastic water firing gun. Could this escape get any more comical? The answer is yes. That's because this prison has two different locations, one called Albany Site and the other called Camp Hill Jail. They arrived at Albany, but the guy they wanted to bust out was at Camp Hill. According to someone familiar with everyone involved, the two men were related to the imprisoned man. He said they are very close together, but this has got to rank as one of the worst attempted jailbreaks ever. We won't disagree. It seems the British authorities didn't take the matter too seriously, and instead of arresting the men for any kind of crime, they were both detained under the UK's Mental Health Act. That was probably the right decision. Now you need to watch 50 things nobody tells you about being in prison, or have a look at this.